Hello friends, welcome to another episode here on the channel. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC 2021 content. We've got a brand new team to feature here today, and this one is another rental team, but from a Japanese player called Verpok, or just Ver is his handle that he uses online. Uh, all his socials will be linked in the description below, as well as this team report we've got up on the screen right now, which goes into a little bit more depth about the team. So if you'd like a little bit more more understanding of the team after seeing today's episode then you can check this out as i say everything is linked down in the description below so as you can see the team here is the whimsicott the terrakian the rillaboom urshifu heatran and zapdos so heatran definitely something that i've been wanting to play on the channel a lot recently uh, it's one of my favorite pokemon of all time so it's really nice to actually have it in a team build and uh, feature such a successful team as well as you can see that there is a lot of information here about how you would approach certain matchups about the team in general and just leads and what you would have in the back and things like that to kind of counteract some of the more popular cores and things that you're seeing in the format at the minute. But I will leave that there because that's something you guys can go and check out in your own time. And today we are gonna be getting on with some battles as always. So as always friends, if you do enjoy this content, please consider dropping a like on the video. At the end of the video, obviously, I want you to watch the whole video before you decide if you like it or not. If you don't like it, then drop a dislike, anything. <laughs> I don't mind. But if you are new and you do enjoy this sort of content, please consider dropping a sub to the channel for more of this sort of content and other Pokemon content that we do on the channel here. So we've got a first opponent and they're rocking a team of Venusaur, Porygon 2, Torkoal, Landorus Therian, we've got Urshifu and Reggie Alecki. So I think here we'll go Whimsicott Terrakion because it gives us a nice outlet against a potential Venusaur Porygon 2 lead here. Um, and this is something that's detailed in the report. Um, if they go for the Trick Room mod with the, the Porygon 2 or if they keep the, the Venusaur out, at least we're going to get some nice damage onto both targets if we don't see a switch in that situation. Um, and then we need Heatran in the back. And probably, I think, as a kind of last Pokemon. Uh, Zapdos is pretty good as a last Pokemon, to be honest. Like, Urshifu is always going to be generally a good Pokemon, but um, mm, maybe Urshifu is not bad. The Porygon 2 always sticks out to me. Whenever I see Porygon 2, I always feel like I need something to hit it, like, so hard. Um, and Urshifu is always one of those Pokemon that you can bring in and generally do quite a lot of work with against things like Porygon 2. But the Zapdos isn't too bad either because it gives us a nice outlet against things like Urshifu, you know. The opposing Urshifu which is a little bit awkward to deal with and it also gives us a nice uh, way to deal with things like Venusaur and it's not too bad against Landorus. But I think we'll go Urshifu. Overall, Urshifu feels like the good one. So we'll lock in with this and we'll see how we get on in this first one today hopefully it is a successful one but guys i hope you all caught the players cup 2 stream over the weekend and saw those region finals uh, that were being streamed by myself lou rosemary and adam and i hope you really enjoyed the event we've got more content coming up this coming weekend with the grand finals and things like that so it's going to be very exciting and uh yeah any feedback on the streams on the commentary anything you'd like to see improved drop down in the description below i'd love to hear that that um constructive criticism if there is any at all but i do really hope i genuinely hope you enjoyed the event over the weekend it was a, a real great event to uh to be a part of and cast so i i, I had a great time okay we're going to see reggie Alecki and urshifu problem here is obviously that um we're going we're going to see like probably an electro web here but we do have the option to tailwind or we do have the option to just dazzling gleam like tailwind puts us ahead of the game here if they do go for the electro web and we can just go for maybe a close combat into that urshifu the problem is if the urshifu is sashed then things get a little bit more tricky for us for sure but the tailwind up is always going to be a nice option we could also go for rocks as well or earthquake but i think because the urshifu is super effectively weak to uh to um close combat kind of want to try and get rid of it as soon as possible so we'll get the tailwind up we'll avoid that electro web and uh, hopefully it's not sashed and uh oh it is sashed of course it's sashed i mean that's one of the things that you kind of look out for here if they lead in it you kind of think yeah well it's probably sashed but we get nice damage onto it it's going to be in range next turn for whimsicott to pick up the knockout as we do take an electro web but uh we do avoid with which one Terrakian, so that's kind of nice, but Terrakian probably goes down here, to be honest. Um, 
Whimsicott are going to take that speed drop and uh, Close Combat are going to take down Tarakin in, in return, which is, uh, yeah, obviously what would happen. So we do, we're not coming out the better end of that trade, to be honest. Um, but Whimsicott, still going to outspeed the Urshifu. Uh, we do have Sucker Punch um, on our own Urshifu that could probably deal with the Regieleki and maybe stop it from potentially getting an attack off here. Um, although Urshifu will outspeed the Regieleki, and we know it's not Sashi, we could just Wicked Blow that slot and then go Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that, that'll be fine. And this kind of gets us a little bit ahead of where we were before. And we still got Heatran in the back to help us against that Sun Core, because that's a big thing. But Heatran, the problem is Heatran's not the kind of Pokemon that you want to rely on too heavily against things like Venusaur, because you know, Venusaur does carry uh, Earth Power now, uh, unlike previous formats where it didn't, and Heatran had the best time against it, unless you saw like a stray Hidden Power ground. But I mean, that's not even uh, an option anymore. So there we go, Tailwind coming into effect here, going to take down the Regieleki, pretty straightforward. Um, and the Dazzling Gleam now will be able to pick up the Urshifu here. I'm surprised the Urshifu in my opponent's end didn't go for a Sucker Punch, um, because they're not locked in with a Choice Binder or anything, so they've got the option to change moves, just to get some, like, just last damage off, you know, before it goes down, because it's kind of inevitable you keep it on the field in this situation, it is going to go down. But... We don't see that, so that's fine. And we see Landorus, and what do we got? Torkoal. Ooh. Right, now, our, our aim of the game here is for us to get rid of the Landorus. Once the Landorus is down, <clears throat> then we're not in a bad spot. I mean, we still got the, the Tailwind in effect, so we could potentially... <sighs> probably, uh, we're probably better off Wicked Blowing. Hmm. No, we need to get rid of the we need to get rid of the Landorus here. We can help in hand Wicked Blow the Landorus. Although I don't think it's gonna be enough to take it down. It's just whatever we do here, we're gonna probably end up with just Heatran left. We still got one turn of our tailwind left, so we're not in the worst spot, I guess. Um I need to get damage onto the I need to get damage onto the um Onto the Landorus, that's the, the thing. Yeah, I think we go Wicked Blow into it. Helping hand Wicked Blow. Hope that it's enough. I think the Landorus is going to max here. You've got to imagine it does. Probably goes for... <clears throat> um, max Airstream to kind of get the speed jump for when our Tailwind ends. I mean, the smart thing here would be to probably go after Whimsicott. But I don't think you need to. I think you just go after Urshifu and then, and then Eruption. But we'll see how much this Wicked Blow does. It's banded, we're close, uh, we're helping hand, so, you know, the crit. Oh, it's very close, it's very close, it's very close. I didn't actually think it would do as much damage, okay. Well, we've got one turn of our Tailwind left, so that's where it may come into effect. Well, hmm, it depends what the Torkoal's got as well. If the Torkoal's got Earth Power, then we are, we're pretty knackered. But if it hasn't got Earth Power, um, then we're not in the worst position. Um, so we're going to outspeed the Landorus this next turn. So it's whether or not we want to predict a Max Guard from the Landorus or if we just attack into it and go after the Torkoal. <sighs> Are they going to Max... Are they going to max guard? Like, if they max guard here, they could potentially lose the game. Because if we max guard as well... Um, it's really a 50-50 here, you know? And it does depend, again, on what the Torkoal has. I think we need to max Flare into the Landorus. It just feels like so obvious that the Landorus just stalls out our Trick Room here and goes for... Ah, did we risk it? I think we risk it. I think we do. I think we have to go for it because otherwise, like, if they don't protect, if they don't max guard here, then we are done for. There's the option where we don't max as well, but the problem is not maxing. We're going to take way more damage if that Torkoal has the sugar berry. But I mean, it doesn't really matter anyway. Like the play would be really going into the Torkoal. I feel 
with uh, Max Quake. Okay, okay. Well, we'll take that all day long. We get rid of the Landorus. That's the thing. The mind game there is horrible because, like, it's always, like... It's obvious to attack into that slot because it's solo health. You've got the speed control advantage here. Oh, oh no. <laughs> they got Yawn. This isn't good. But we know, right? They got Burning Jealousy. They got Yawn. What have they got? Body Press. I'm going to get some decent damage onto it now with a Max Quake. They'll probably protect here. Yeah, that makes sense. And then we'll go to Sleep Sleeps. Which is a bit of a shame, but we'll see. The special defense boost here is always going to be useful. And we'll see if Heatran can not take too many turns of sleep. So if we, we're guaranteed a sleep turn this next one. We still got our Shooker Berry intact as well, which is always useful. Uh, but they've probably got Body Press. That would be my bet for their third move. Yeah. Okay, oh, we need some wake. We need some wake ups. And the thing is that that the yeah, we need some wake ups because two body presses will take us down. So, oh, we get it. We get it. We'll probably take one body press. I think we'll take one body press. I'm pretty sure we'll take it, and then another Earth Power is going to take it down. We get so lucky with that one turn wake up. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> okay, as long as this doesn't take us down. Yeah, he a nice, sturdy, strong, tanky boy. Sun fades, and we'll be able to lock in with our Earth Power. And pick up the win for this first one, which is pretty nice. Okay, well, that, that's worked out all right. The sleep turn kind of helped us out there. Um, you know, if we if we take one turn longer of sleep then it would have been and we wouldn't have been able to win this one so we get we get very fortunate but you know gonna only take three turns of sleep you're gonna wake up on one of them so we got the one that we needed so we'll take it all day long friends all day long right with that friends we'll uh, move into our next opponent of the episode like we always do so we'll be right back next we've got a Gardevoir a Whimsicott Cinderace Meowstic Rillaboom and Metagross so what a mad mix of Pokemon here stuff that we're not generally seeing too much in series 7 Gardevoir Cinderace Meowstic uh, but the, the other three, we've kind of seen a, a bunch of. We've got speed control and abundance here. We've got the instant speed control from the Prankster Whimsicott there. Uh, the Gardevoir can pro set up Trick Room to kind of counteract our Tailwind here uh, that we need to watch out for. Um, and then you've got Cinderace, very fast offensive Pokemon, you know, just in its own right with that Librero ability. Change its type on its move, uh, whatever move it uses. Um, okay, and then the Meow Stick as well, another prankster user, so I'm not really sure what the Meow Stick would be going for here. This is a tricky one. Like, the, the, the one thing that I would say is, like, Urshifu is going to be very important for us in this match. Um, we might be better off leading Zapdos here, you know? Just for the fact that Zapdos kind of, yeah, I mean, I think what we'll do, we'll go Zapdos, Whimsy. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get the Terrakion going in this one for some reason. Uh, I think you definitely need Urshifu. And maybe, what do we need in that last slot? Maybe Rillaboom in this one. Um, Heatran feels very good though as well. So we'll bring Heatran. There's no real ground on my opponent's team, you know, other than the, the Metagross. So we, I think the biggest threat to us going into this one is we've got Tailwind, they've got Tailwind. We need to be very careful and cautious around the fact that they've got Trick Room. And if they set the Trick Room up, then the Metagross could be in a really nice position against something like Heatran, which could cause us a lot of issues. Um, all right, well, here we go. The double Psychic lead from my opponent coming out. Um, the Trick Room as well, which is, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit tricky. Now, an option we do have, like, we could switch straight into Heatran here. Um, because I expect the Metagross to go for something like an Ice Punch into Zapdos. Um, 
and I don't really fancy losing Zapdos like super early on in this match. But we could stay in and we could just go help in hand into like Max Airstream into Meowstic and try and remove that from the field because that might be enough to take it down, you know. We'll just be in a lot of trouble if we do see, uh, if it survives and we see a Trick Room. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. <sighs> we do have the Sharp Beak on Zapdos as well, so it is boosting the power there. 20% on its, uh, its base damage. Um, and the help and handle obviously help even more, so we'll see. It might be enough. I feel like it would be enough, because I think you probably you build Meowstic way more defensively uh, than special defensively. Ooh, but we say that, and then we see a light screen come out. The 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 anti the anti setup of what we want. Okay, well, at least we're gonna get some decent damage into it. And even through the light screen, we pick up the knockout and we get a good speed boost there. So that's that's useful for us. But the problem is we've maxed a little bit too early. We're going to probably see an Ice Punch. Is that maybe a Salt Vest Metagross as well? Ooh, Rock Slide. That's something you generally see on Metagross. Um, all right. Well, what we want to try and do is get Heatran onto the field now and max. We need to max Flare. And then the next turn, I think. Mm, yeah, okay. Well, Cinderace is coming out onto the field. That's fine. Um... Yeah, I think we'll max Airstream into Cinderace. It's going to max. And I think what we'll do is we'll switch straight into Heatran. Uh, yes. Cinderace definitely going to max here. Um, but what it goes for, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, a bit, a bit puzzled because the next turn then we need to set the max flare thing is the switch to heatran as well is quite nice from whimsicott whatever they're going to hit whimsicott with super effective you know heatran's going to be able to uh sap up pretty well yeah i i do wonder um if we'll be able to get the airstream off here and then next turn max flare into metagross and get another it's just not doing enough into that Cinderace. It's all behind the light screen, coming in massively useful. Um, okay. G-Max Fireball. It's not into our Whimsicott. It's into our Zappy. But we do manage to take it. I think a Rock Slide's probably going to take us down here. Uh, yep. Okay, well, we do get a speed boost with Heatran. Um, that is helpful. Uh, but not... Ideal. I think what we're going to have to do is get Wimmy onto the field. We're going to have to get a Tailwind up. We're going to have to... They're going to max Knuckle uh, with Cinderace, for sure. Tailwind. And they... The thing is now, I feel like they're... they're kind of in this position where they need to maybe... Do we just protect Heatran here? Yeah, let's protect Heatran. Let's get our Tailwind up. Yeah, because I think if we protect this turn, they may go for a Max Knuckle, but they're kind of forced to go for an Airstream as well, I think. But this puts Heatran on plus three, so we're going to outspeed the Cinderace after they get plus one, yeah. And they're going to go into... Yeah, Wim... Wim... Wimmer. Yeah, and they're probably going to Earth... Well, yeah, probably maybe even Earthquake. It would make sense now. To go after the Heatran with an Earthquake. <sighs> Maybe it would have been better to actually just attack here rather than being super passive with Heatran. His Life Orb as well, so it's going to be hitting super hard. But thing is, I want to get Urshifu on the field now. Wicked Blow will take down the Cinderace. And we should we should add speed it um, in Tailwind. So we we'll, we should be able to pick up the knockout onto it with a Wicked Blow. And then we can go for, just go for, mm. the problem is like as well, is the Metagross weakness policy? Because if it is, then that makes it a little bit even, that makes it even more awkward because it's going to be set up and do so much damage to us. Um... But 
but we can take it down the next turn. And you've really got to concentrate down the Heatran, I think. Yeah, let's just Heat Wave. We may get a burn as well. Okay. So that's nice. The Metagross is going to go down the next turn. There's a weakness policy. Yeah, the policy. <laughs> kind of forcing. It's just if we Flash Cannon there, it's doing no damage. It's no good to us. And we can't, like... I don't know which is better to really, like, go after. The Metagross is always going to be good to go after. But if we leave the Cinderace alone, it's just going to max air strain, get another speed boost. Okay, well, we... I don't think we take this with the Shuckerberry plus two. Urshifu will. Yeah, but Heatran's not, not able to do that. We're still in Trick Room. Um... We know the magic. Well, it depends what their last Pokemon is. We need something to come in that's not going to cause us any issues. But I don't know. Doesn't feel like it's going to happen. Cinderace Metagross is a really nice pairing. Yeah, and there's the Rillaboom there. So fake out. It's going to be end of days here. Although they are weakening their um, <laughs> their earthquake, but I think they've probably got other options other than earthquake here. So we can do nothing but lock in to our wicked blot and bow down and surrender to our opponent here. Unfortunately. Not going to be able to pick up the win in this one. Just trying to think what would have been a better way to kind of approach this one, really. Oh, I got Grassy Glide, but it is more than enough to pick up the knockout. No fake out there. Um, I think we probably would have been better off. I think the Zapdos going down too early was probably our biggest mistake there. Uh, attacking into Cinderace like we did. Knowing that we had Tailwind in the back as well. In hindsight, we really should have just... Max flared into the Metagross, got as much damage onto it as possible. And I think then we get Whimsicott, Heatran onto the field, Tailwind, and then and then and then get the Heat Wave knockout onto uh a Metagross. Heatran's the big key there, I think. Keep that around. Uh gets uh, Urshifu in to deal with the Cinderace and then the Rillaboom is not really a problem unless it has high horsepower, which it likely does. But if we still got our Shukaberry intact, um, then that would have been the way to do it. So yeah, I think the Zapdos play where we went for, we got greedy with our airstreams. I think we didn't need the additional one thinking that we maybe did onto the Heatran when really in, in hindsight we had Tailwind in the back. So that's just something being new to the team these are my first two games with this team so that is just something you know that you're going to learn along the way and you do with all the rental teams so it's nothing i'm too sad about it's it's always beneficial to um to look back and be able to see where you went wrong and where you could have went in a different direction to change the game and if you're doing that with your games then it's not something that you should feel like annoyed at bad about or anything like that because that they're, they're the key bits of information always remember this friends it, when you're playing pokemon if you can look back on a game and you can you can really see areas where that's where i should have well, this is what i should have done this is what i should have corrected then they're the key elements or if there's a certain pokemon that didn't perform well or did, missed a knockout or something like that that's really great information because that is the information that's going to allow you to take that step further to improve yourself improve your players and improve the team in general and just keep getting better because in such a competitive environment the pokemon is especially at the minute uh, and the players are getting better and better and better all the time it's just about having these little tricks to try and give you a bit of an edge and if this is helpful for you guys then that is all that matters because that is snippet of information is all i want is to try and help you guys um and push you on a, a nice path to uh to get to where you want to but there's the team thank you so much to uh to the Poke or oh, the underscore pork, whatever the username is there. But like I say, really nice team, really nice to be able to feature it today on the channel. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it. As always, um, if you have, do drop a like, do sub to the channel if you are new to the channel and you want to see more of this content. And uh, we'll be back with more content later in the week, friends. We have some more funsies with uh, your comments, your suggestions for teams uh, that I'll be featuring uh, later this week. So do stick around for those. We've got some fun teams to feature as well and some other rentals as well throughout this week from specifically some other Japanese players as well so we've got some really nice teams to feature this week so I do hope you enjoy the content and um, I'll just sign off there have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all for another episode very soon so thanks for tuning in take care and bye bye